Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Hajj season is upon us. And Dr. Shabir, there are some people who will never be able to go to Hajj due to not being able to afford it. What's your advice for those individuals? How can they reap the benefits of Hajj or get some of the rewards without actually participating? Yeah. So, um, yeah, first of all, you know, I sympathize with those people. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them better circumstances and help them to go and perform the Hajj and get this wonderful experience because we hear a lot about the experience. So I can, uh, you know, just imagine that some people are listening to our sermons in which we talk about, you know, the great experience of Hajj and they're thinking, well, you know, I'll never be able to go there. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it possible. And with him, all things are possible. Uh, but in the meantime, like what do you do? Uh, well, there are many things to, um, to do during the season of Hajj. And, and sometimes one can go through a, um, you know, a thing mentally and, and feel satisfied if that's all you can do and, and get a lot of benefits from it that way. I mean, uh, I, I love to play ping pong. So <laughs> sometimes I just imagine myself, you know, taking a nice <laughs> ping pong shot. I didn't right? know that about you. Yeah, you, you didn't realize I, <laughs> I have this imagination. I right? know you like ping pong, but yeah, not that imagination I, that yeah, you're, you're anticipating that. Yeah, moves yeah, and things I'm like thinking that. thinking it through, yeah. <laughs> and I, I get some pleasure from just thinking the way, you know, I'll, I'll chop that ball or smack that ball <laughs> or something like this. So in a similar way, uh, you know, when I think about Hajj, like uh, when, when we get into the Hajj season, I've already started giving sermons. Uh, uh, regarding Hajj this this year, even though you know we're some time away from from the Hajj, uh, because I I start getting into the mood for it, and and I start thinking of you know where the pilgrims are going to be, where, and I imagine myself like being part of that. Imagine I was there and I was doing that and so on. So so that gives me a similar type of uh, satisfaction and spiritual high. Um, so that's what people can do. Just uh, you know visually, create uh, creatively, uh, see yourself there and doing the going through the motions and getting closer and closer to God through all of these um, uh, various practices and rituals of, of the Hajj. So that's one thing we can do. So follow the dates, know the dates, know that uh, the month of the Hijjah in the Arabic, uh, the, the Islamic calendar, that's the month of the Hajj. Uh, so we'll know when announcements uh, are bandied about that we've gone into the month, new month, the moon has been seen. Uh, so the, the Hajj will start to be performed from about the 8th, uh, not from about the 8th, but exactly on the 8th. Uh, the pilgrims will don their, um, uh, they, they'll enter the state of ihram, and for men, that mean, uh, state of sanctification. And for men, that will mean that uh, they don two pieces of uh, uh, clothing that are not uh, uh, fitted to the form of the body, simple sheets of cloth uh, are draped around. And um, they will go to Mina, uh, just uh, outside of Mecca, where they will camp for uh, about five days. Um, and they will live in tents. Uh, and then within those five days, um, so that's on the eighth day, they will go there. The ninth day, uh, they will go to another place called Arafah. Uh, and then they will um, supplicate God, they will pray uh, on, on Arafah. Uh, there too, they will be on, uh, in tents for some of the time, but in the afternoon period when the sun is not so intense, uh, the heat of the sun, that is, from our perspective, uh, then, you know, they will come out into the open and they will, you know, raise their hands in supplication before God, praying for themselves, for the entire world. We can see ourselves being part of that. And one way of being part of that, for, even from a distance, is uh, that uh, where we are, uh, anywhere in the world, we can uh, observe a fast on that day. Uh, that's known as the day of Arafah. And then the next day is the day of Eid. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that uh, you know, is a celebratory day um, for people everywhere. Um, but uh, we can also think that this is closely connected with the pilgrimage because um, on that day, we will be offering a sacrifice, commemorating the sacrifice of Abraham. And uh, the pilgrims will be offering their sacrifices uh, there in, in the uh, environments of uh, the environs of, of Minna. Uh, um, but we'll be doing it uh, around the world. So in that way, we are connected with the people who are performing uh, the Hajj. Uh, so in one way or another, we can actually feel that connection and that spiritual upliftment that comes with the Hajj, even if we cannot afford to make it. But uh, as a consolation, let me uh, you know add here that um, you know sometimes it's it's 
better for us in a way, in a, in a weird way. It's, it's better that we're not obligated because if you're obligated, then you have to go. Some people are obligated and, and, they're, not, and they're still not going, mm. right? So that means it's, it's a double whammy against them because uh, they, if, they, if they were not obligated, they were free, right? Now they're obligated, they have to go. And then some people go, but they do not perform the rights properly. So they mm. were obligated to go and do it, but they didn't do it right. Uh, so they did not fulfill their obligation. So it's better to not have the obligation in the first place. So, it, you know, in a weird way, we can say, all right, you know, you're probably better off in a, in a way. But not that we desire that. We desire that Allah will give ample provisions to people and they will be able to go and Allah will take them there and give them the um, experience of performing a righteous hajj, one that is accepted, and they will come back with all of their sins forgiven and that they will pray in the meantime for us and for the rest of the world. We'll leave it at that. Thank you, Dr. Spear. You're welcome. Support us today and help us share the message of Islam with people across the globe. Thank you, and may God bless you and your loved ones with the very best always. <laughs>